Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Welcome to Magmel, the other world, and land of fairies. Today we're diving into dynamic lands and facing off against Kirun in a series of games to test our mettle. For each Magmel mission, you're required to have a pet as a partner. This pet will remain summoned the entire duration of the dungeon and cannot be desummoned, even if it runs out of summon time during the run. Each of the Magmel missions can support a party of up to eight players, but can also be completed solo. Choosing an appropriate companion is key to clearing some of the challenges you'll face in Magmel. My top choices for this are the Scooter Imps, Fairy Dragons, Cart Rider Carts, and Phone Dragons as they have access to Windmill or some other AoE attacks. The Catchy and Little Jack pets should be avoided if you're planning to run this solo due to their slow attack speed. I recommend having Rush of Wind and or Pulling Force Fin Bead skills, as well as a full five friend summons. These are, of course, optional if you have a party, but invaluable for solo runs. Talking to the Gata on the right side will allow us to enter the mission Dynamic Lands, or DL. At the start of every room, I like to make sure I have Divine Link active to both strengthen my pet's damage and survivability greatly, and also help manage mob aggro. In room 1, we face four waves of enemies. This is where we get a peek at the main gimmick of Magmel Dungeons. The enemies are all color-coded. Red or yellow enemies can only be damaged by the player. Blue or purple enemies can only be damaged by pets. White or green enemies can be damaged by both players and pets. For players that are affected by color vision deficiencies, a small cat icon will appear over the mobs that can only be defeated by pets. This icon goes away rather quickly, unfortunately. The first wave of enemies are able to be damaged by both players and pets. The second wave can only be damaged by pets. The third wave can only be damaged by players. And as a special note, I'd like to mention here that we can mount a pet and attack these enemies with auto attack active, in order to gain proficiency on weapons easily, since the pets can't damage them, and they're always boss level. The final wave in this room features a few enemies of all types mixed together. After this introduction to the color coding mechanic, we proceed to room 2. In room 2, we will face three waves of enemies, much the same as the previous room. This room, however, will display red circles that will negatively impact the player in random locations and often overlapping. You can avoid the debuff by mounting a pet. Sometimes it will damage you, some debuffs will slow you, some will even reverse your controls and make you unable to attack. If you clear the room quickly or avoid the circles, these aren't major issues. Even if you get debuffed, it usually isn't detrimental to the run so long as you have Divine Link active to keep the aggro on your pet while you're vulnerable. After this, we proceed to room 3 that will immediately start by teaching you the core mechanic of this room. Once a player begins the room by crossing into the circle around the pillar, a ghost will spawn. A green orb will appear when it's defeated. Players have 20 seconds to pick up the orb after it appears or it will despawn. These orbs can be targeted by using the object target hotkey, which can be changed in the hotkey settings if you haven't set it already. Picking an orb up will make you unable to perform other skills or actions, and you will lose the orb if you get hit. The goal is to walk the orb to the pillar and place it in the pillar by clicking on it. On the top right of the screen, you will see a display with how many orbs remain to be collected. This is where having pets with AoE skills comes in handy. I find it helpful to gather the mobs using Act 6 Crisis or Spinning Slasher very, very close to the pillar so that orbs can be deposited rapidly. Once you have collected the required number of orbs, defeating the rest of the current wave will spawn the mini boss. This mini boss is different for hard mode compared to intermediate. On intermediate, the boss is a guard captain and will change colors which make it immune or resistant to certain damage types. Very similar to the nightmare humanoid you find in Chifinaha, aka Water Park. On hard mode, you'll face a Magmel Mage Spirit. It can use magic, nothing out of the ordinary. After defeating it and its followers, we can move on to the next room. Room 4 of Dynamic Lands is sometimes frustrating for players as it doesn't teach you the mechanic before you begin, unlike the prior rooms. The goal is to move corresponding mob types to designated corners and defeat them within the circle. The name of the mob needed for each corner is displayed above the miniature gatas. Once all four corners are solved and the gatas are destroyed, the room is completed. Here are my tips for room 4. First, use rain casting to make life a little easier. Mobs under a rain cloud will not aggro you unless you attack them first. And don't put your alchemy set away just yet, as wind blast is really fantastic for moving mobs into range of the circles at each corner. From there, they should be in range for spinning slasher to pull them directly into the corner circles. 
With multiple players working together, you can use a mix of Wire Pool, Act 6, Wind Blast, Shadow Bind, Death Mark, and Spinning Slasher to pull and keep mobs in the circle until they are defeated. By using a sleep effect, such as Spirit of Tuan, Sheep Tuplet, or Nimbus Summon, during the Spinning Slasher, you can lock mobs at the location you spin at temporarily. I use this trick a lot here. Again, pet AoE attacks are going to pull weight, especially Rush of Wind and Pulling Force, while the pet is in the center of the circle. After clearing room 4, we're moving on to the boss room. Before I enter the boss room, I always refresh my buffs. Double check the pet's AI settings, and start a fresh Divine Link. We want to make sure our pet is on command mode, or using a custom AI to make the pets ignore being attacked, like the one I have in the description. At the start of the boss room, the first thing I do is bring my pet next to the wall and tell it to sit, either by typing sit in the chat, using the rest hotkey on the pet hotkey window, or pressing the hotkey to command the pet to sit, which can be adjusted in the hotkey settings. The pet will absorb all the aggro, leaving us to deal with the boss. I then move slightly away from the pet, as the boss will also focus the majority of his attacks on the pet. Karun has a few different attacks he can do. The main attacks are a charge attack in a straight line and an arrow volley. It's best to avoid being hit by the volley if you can manage it. As the fight goes on, Karun's attacks become stronger and stronger. We're also working against the clock on our Divine Link duration, as we'll get swarmed once it runs out or gets cancelled. The adds in the boss room respawn infinitely, so defeating them will not progress the mission. However, they do have some effect on the environment of the battle. Defeating tree spirits will leave branches that stop Karun's charge attacks, and defeating summon spirits will create a temporary natural shield that can block Karun's arrow volleys and cause him to become vulnerable temporarily. After some time, Karun may sit under a golden shield and become invulnerable to attacks while regenerating health. The shield can be destroyed. The target hitbox for it is often under the ground or beneath Karun himself, so it's advised to use control to target it, or at least to help find it in the first place. Once the shield breaks, one player may mount Karun and start a minigame. If successful, Karun becomes massively vulnerable for 10 seconds. Those 10 seconds of vulnerability are the best time to end the fight. If failed, the player that attempted it is instantly killed. To start the minigame, a player must be near Karun, where they will see a golden icon to click. It will only allow you to start the minigame as long as you have no skills loaded. To succeed in the minigame, the intended way at least, you must rapidly and repeatedly press the A, S, or D key opposite the corresponding red light at a random edge of the screen. If it appears on the right, you spam A. If it appears above, you spam S. And if it appears to the left, you spam D. However, we can make this way easier. There's no penalty for an incorrect button press, only a penalty for not pressing the designated key enough. So just spam all three keys at the same time until the minigame completes. If no player mounts Karun or the shield remains unbroken, he becomes stronger and the fight continues. If the fight continues, the shield will continue to appear periodically until the boss is defeated. I hope you can make use of these runs as references for your own. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.